Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would, to 2 Peter, 1st chapter. I also ask you to be in prayer for Jason. Uh, wherever he is, he, he'll be gone to this Wednesday and next Wednesday night, probably. And so next Wednesday night, I'm going to be, if I'm doing the Bible study, I'm going to do a study on the resurrection. Don't that sound rather rising? There's a lot more to the resurrection. We think about one of the last days going to be a resurrection. There's already been some resurrections. We're going to look at them. And, uh, and, and they're in the Bible, so it's not, if it's not in the Bible, I don't tell you. And uh, had a person a little bit back ask me, what was my opinion on something? I said, well, my opinion, if it's not in the Bible, I have no opinion. They said, well, this, this is not in the Bible. What's your opinion? I said, well, they're like, opinions are like noses. Everybody's got one. And so my opinion is, doesn't matter of what it is. It just, but it was something to do with a spiritual matter. And I said, let's just, let's go to the Bible for, to find your answer. So I want to share with you tonight. We'll kind of begin with this. Uh, in... in uh, 2 Peter, the first chapter, verse 10. Uh, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. So doing your diligence is making absolutely positive, sure, now the question that I have, can you and would you, I think one of the most important things in our Christian life is our personal testimony. And we tell other people about our salvation experience. When it happened, where it happened. Now you ought to know because you were there when it happened. And so one of the first places I think as a Christian that our testimony grows the greatest is when we share our testimony with somebody else about how we were saved and then to enter to sharing with them the plan of salvation of how they too can be saved. Now there are two important tools to use in sharing with somebody else. Well, three, I suppose. One is your personal testimony. What God has done for you and what He is doing. And then the Bible. And it probably should be first. And then one other thing. I was talking to a person one time to talk to them about accepting the Lord and they said, Oh, your breath don't smell good. So I learned that this is a good tool to use when you start to talk to somebody, a breath in. In some cases, I put two in, you know, just to be sure. But when you go, if you have, I'm just going to say it, you can like it, lump it, or leave it, but if you've got the, the smell of tobacco, snuff, cigarette, pipe, cigar, on your breath, to a lot of people, that's rather repulsive. And as a Christian, you want to tell somebody else about how to be saved. And you that, that odor from your breath. Or it doesn't have to be that. It can just be the failure maybe to have brushed your teeth. Have a clean mouth. You know. And, and I don't mean just clean <laughs> from profanity, but it better be that. But a good clean mouth, whenever they smell your breath, that it's a refreshing smell because you're sharing with them something that's rather refreshing. So <clears throat> make your calling, make sure that you know, that you know, that you know that you're saved. What did happen? Um, so second, Tim, first, uh, second Timothy chapter verse one, Simon Peter, a servant of an apostle and an apostle of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> to them who have obtained like precious faith 
unto us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ Jesus. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According to his divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby we are he, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, there's that word again, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, or the word love. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. And then we looked at that verse again. Wherefore the rather brethren Give diligence, uh, give it all diligence. Make your calling and lecture. Make absolute sure. Uh, how many people over the years have asked, "Do you are you saved?" Well, I think so. Or I hope so. And I've had people say, well, I won't know until I get there. No. Too late. It's over. And so to be diligent to make absolutely sure. There's another sure thing in life. And that's death. Now someone has added to it, said, taxes and death. Well, let me tell you, there's still going to be death, whether the taxes are not. Death is coming. Of 100% of people that have lived, have or will die. We're not going to live forever. Unless the Lord comes and raptures us home. Wouldn't that be a tremendous experience? While we're in the middle of something. And I've often thought. <laughs> he said, how are you think not? I think it might be on a Wednesday night. Because most Baptists wouldn't think the Lord would come then. Well, you know. <laughs> At any rate, uh, I, I titled this study Biblical Qualifications, and I used to call it for church leaders, but I changed the title <clears throat> to the Lord's Servants. We aren't leaders, we're followers. We're followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's where uh, it really matters in life. Order our conduct in keeping with the principles of God's Word. How many times did you have heard it? Well, you know, I know so and so. I, I, I'm as good as he is or she is. Well, that's wonderful. But don't compare yourself to me or anybody other human. Compare yourself to to the Lord Jesus Christ. If he was standing right beside you now, can you say, hey, I measure up? And there's a, if you say you are, you just fail the test. You, uh, we, we don't do that. And then in the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter and verse one, walk worthy. Gosh. Ephesians 4 1. Therefore, I therefore, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein ye are called, 
with all lowliness. Mm. Well, what is lowliness? Humility. No, humility, meekness, long suffering. Don't pray for that. Don't pray for long suffering. That's like we're praying for patience, for bearing one another in love. Endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And so loving one another and caring for one another. Um, uh, then in uh, 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, 7th uh, chapter, I'm sorry. Uh, verse 17. But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one. Do you recall the time when the Lord dealt with you and you accepted Christ as your Savior? Good time to think back. Good time to back up and remember that experience. I I refresh that experience often in my life. That Wednesday night, Freeway Baptist Church, 149 Winkler Drive, October the 15th, 1958. I already have my obituary written. I got my birth date <laughs> and my rebirth date and my graduation date, I've left that blank. That's what I want. When I was born, didn't, that's not that important. What is important was when I was born again. I've had, I've had people tell me, well, but you know, the Lord understands. He made me like this. That's why he said you have to get born again. A lot of folks need to be, we all, have to experience the new birth to be born again. And so, as we looked at in Ephesians 1, following it, that you walking worthy of where we've been called, where of our calling. And then in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 18, we'll look in there now. Is any man being called circumcised or Jew? Let him not become uncircumcised is it any call in uncircumcision or Gentile? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. <coughs> Being obedient to God. Uh, sometimes we run into experiences in life where that being obedient to God is a test. When you buy a vehicle and you have some difficulties with it, oh, that can be a test. But you can win. When you have other difficulties that arise in life, and they're going to because Satan is going to be sure to put your faith and your Christianity to a test. If he can make you stumble, he has had a short time victory so often folks when they slip back into the flesh will say you know I must not be a Christian because if I was a Christian I wouldn't do that well we find those times in life where the pressures are hard and we we fail the Lord I can find throughout the Bible where there were those who failed them. Simon Peter. Oh. Don't you reckon he wanted to eat that rooster when he crowed that morning? I've often thought on that cold, chilly morning, they'd been warming by a fire there in Pilate's Hall. And Jesus had told us that before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And whenever that rooster crowed, Peter looked and that his and the Lord's eyes met. 
You know, when you're really dealing with someone and you look them right in the eye, you know you got their attention, don't you? Jesus had Simon Peter's attention. And what happened to Simon Peter? What did he do? He cried. What? He cried. Yes, he did. Why did he cry? Because he failed. He failed. It broke his heart that he had failed his master. He had said, Lord, I'll go to the death with you. I've been in testimonial services where I pe heard people say, well, I tell you, I'd never do certain things. And the next day they're doing what they said they'd never do. A little, you know, what does the Bible tell us? What did James say about the tongue? It's what? Yeah. A little fire to a little red devil behind a white picket fence. <laughs> and the devil, the devil can slip in there on your tongue. That's usually one of our one of our big problems is the tongue. If you ever want to just wish you could just stomp your tongue, <laughs> just put it down, step on it good. When I was a pastor at Castro, they used to tease me that, and I was always putting my foot in my mouth about something, and they said I was the only person they knew that could walk with both feet in his mouth. I guess so. <laughs> Colossians 1, 9 said, Walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Walking. James again says, I'm, this is Goins' paraphrase, but your walk and your talk ought to match up. That doesn't know what that. No, it doesn't. Boom. I, I went in today, I paid that bank note off, and I went in to see the manager of the bank, and I said, I want to thank you for trusting me on a signature loan for the amount of money that you loaned me. He said, there's five Things that I look at whenever I go to loan, money. To anybody. I said, well, he said, it starts with character, and I throw the other four out. But I thanked him for having trusted me enough. A loan signature for a rather large sum of money. Never dreamed anybody would do that. But I'd done business with him before, come through every time. This time I said, Lord, please don't let me die before I get that paid off. <laughs> please, please. And now I'm saying, Lord, let me live a little bit longer so I can enjoy having it paid off. <laughs> and then I got the thing that I said, well, Lord, you let me live like I got it paid off. But I, I still, you know, let me live a little bit longer. Well, looking back at 1 Corinthians, Seventh chapter, looking at verse uh, at twenty. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. In our walk and who we are, as I shared earlier, the qualifications for Christian servants. You know, we we refer to church leaders. Did you know there aren't any such thing as church leaders? We're servants. I don't find anywhere in the Bible where it refers to us as leaders. We're referred to, Paul said, we are bond slaves. We're slaves. And so we're a slave to who? To the Lord Jesus Christ. We're, we're to be a servant to him. 
Jesus demonstrated that at the Last Supper where he washed the feet of his disciples. He took on the role of the serpent. Why, why was that such an important thing? Or why would washing the feet? That was the servant's role that if I went to your house, your servant, uh, because my feet were dusty, traveling the trails. Do you recall where it said, if the salt has loosed its, lost its saltiness, it's cast out to be a trod underfoot by man? Well, the purpose of that salt, when it lost its saltiness, they strode along the trails to kill the thorns and thistles that grew along the edge of the trail to keep them from sticking your feet. And so, you dry, arid climate, some of our heels still crack. And so there'd be cracks in their feet and that salt would it, and that could be painful. And so they went to your house, they washed your feet. That was the role of the servant when they come here. That was a way of saying to you, you're welcome in my home. And Jesus used that, that servant role there and so many other places in life that he, he served the servant role. The book of Proverbs, verse, chapter 11, verse 20 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. I, I find that to be probably one of the most... Uh, and and when Sunday night, when uh, Corey selected John the 15th chapter on the vine and the branches and that you bear fruit, that you bear more fruit. The fruit of a Christian is another Christian. That we share a witness, a testimony of leading another person to the Lord. In the book, in uh, the 23rd Psalm, he said that we are, he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And, you know, and the Bible does tell us that a good name is more precious than ointment. It's, a, it's an important thing. But that name is for no other purpose and should not be in our lives other than to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. So, walking worthy uh, being bringing forth fruit unto the Lord. What was it that uh, Andrew Andrew went and found his brother. You remember who his brother was? And he brought him to Jesus. Simon Peter. He found Peter and brought him to the Lord. We don't hear too much about Andrew anymore. Peter kind of. Isn't it, isn't it amazing? Now, another thing, and, and this passage dealing with this, where Andrew brought Peter to the Lord, and Simon Peter became really overshadowed Andrew. We don't hear too much about Andrew anymore. How many of us was that way? Well, now, now, wait, now, I'm the one that brought him to the Lord. I heard a phrase many years ago that I like and I've tried to stick to it. it. Makes no difference who gets the credit so long as God gets the glory. And so in our Christian life, whatever is done, well, I, I did that. I, you know, I want the credit for it. Poor, oh, I have to tell this on. She's not here to defend herself. <laughs> Bless her heart. Miss, uh, golly, uh, we was over the other building. Miss Eloise, we baptized one, two or three one Sunday. And she made the remark, well, we had not baptized this many people in this little short length of time forever. We got to give Brother Goins credit for that. I said, oh, no. Got to give God the credit. Brother Goins, no cash. And so 
I walk by her every once in a while and I kind of bump right here. The boy still likes cash. <laughs> we, we, she and I get a good laugh about it. But uh, uh, I have to say this, that uh, the former pastor prior to me had left everything right. He had done some good ministry in this church and done some things that I just happened to come along and shake the bush and I got the fruit or I got to see the fruit fall. Oh, but Brother uh, Earhart, I believe he got was he, he wasn't a meeting prior to me. It was somebody in between. But, Collins? Huh? Walter, was it Walter Collins? Well, it could, yeah, Walter was in them for a time, but Brother those Harold. guys, huh? Brother Harold? Brother oh. Harold's? Well, Earhart took over after he, after he. Uh, yeah, Brother Gerald backed up a little. You were just a little 10, 10-year-old boy running around right here then. No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> no. 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 Trust me. Here we go. I controlled him when he was 8 and 10 in class. <laughs> Not true. Okay. Right. But uh, <laughs> anyway, these, these men had done it. You know, Paul said, there's one that watered and another plant, but it's God that gives the increase. And that, that's the way it is with us. You know, you, you, may, you may witness to someone, and I've heard people say, I've witnessed to someone for 20 years and they've never come. And then all at once, a little later, they hear, well, and I've witnessed to them all these years and they didn't come. But you laid the groundwork. It may, you may have had more to do with it than the one that had the benefit of seeing them make that decision for the Lord. And so don't, don't count it a waste of your time. <laughs> I was chaplain out at the prison. One of the guards out there one night, and I was called back out for something. He said, why do you waste your time on these guys out here? I said, well, first place, they're worth it in the eyes of the Lord. And the second place, it's not my time, it's God's time. And he can recall mine anytime he wants to. That's up to him. And so it's, it's not about time, it's about doing. And so you have the opportunity to do it. Don't worry about the time. Uh, saw a guy the other day, and I hadn't seen him in quite a while, and he said, do you remember me? And I didn't remember him great big black guy, and I said, I, no, I, I don't remember you. He said, you did something for me out there in that prison. And I said, what, what was it? He said, you remember they called you one morning to come? He said, you come about four o'clock in the morning to tell me my mama had died. And he said, I never forgot that. He said, you sat there with me to about seven o'clock that morning. And he said, uh, I've never forgotten that. So whatever you do for the cause of Christ, it's never a waste. Sometimes we waste time to get around doing something for him instead of getting, you know, what you do for the Lord. Listen, <laughs> he has got a record-keeping system that is no fail to it. He knows all about it. So in verse 20 he said, So let every man abide in the same, God, that's in the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians. So let every man abide in the same calling where he was called. So said, well, I, I wish he'd call me to do something else. Well, hang around, he just might do that. Just be faithful to where he has called you. And he may very well. Verse 21, art thou called being a servant? That's what we're all called to be. Care not for it, for if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also, he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. You're bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. So in our walk, in our, our life, in our, our serving, 
the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the things that and he tells us, that, be you holy, for I'm holy. We don't hear a whole lot about holiness and holy living anymore, but we probably need to recognize that. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 12 says, be worthy. Oh, goodness. How can we be worthy of God? Without Jesus. That's exactly right. Apart from the Lord Jesus, it's impossible to be. Let me look that passage. Let me look it up. I got it written down. Well, Jason may have got my Bible or somebody's moved. Two twelve, yeah. You found it? Yes. I found it too. Go ahead, read it. We exhort each one of you and encourage you and charge you to walk in the manner of one of God, who calls you to his own kingdom and glory. Okay. That you would walk worthy of God, who hath called you into his kingdom and glory. To walk honoring him. Worthy. Um uh, I think it's a reminder to us. That's a strong passage, isn't it? How can I be worthy? Goodness alive. <coughs> Not worth much. But I can be worth something for His glory. And I think that's where we must find ourselves being as the vessel that he can use. Uh, any comments you have you want to share? Confessions? <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> How many of you remember where you were when you were saved? Sometimes that salvation experience didn't just happen all at once. And I, I think God had worked on me for a while, but that night that I was saved, that's the, that's the night I said, okay, Lord, I turn it over to you. And that, that's the time I, I remember that. Oh, I had been teaching a Sunday school class prior. I served on committees in the church. I, I was somebody in the church, but I was lost. And every time an invitation was given in church, I, I battled it. When it was over with, you know what the devil put in my mind? The invitation was over. Well, you won that one. Uh-uh, I lost that one. I was a loser once again until that night, that Wednesday night. Yeah, in a Baptist church on Wednesday night. Who ever heard of that happening? It ought to be a regular thing. Ought to be. With the Awanas, I can almost assure you that will become a regular thing. Children, when they come to the knowledge of their need for Jesus Christ. Now, I've had folks say, well, they can't be saved till they're 12. Who said? That's trying to put a limit on what Jesus can do. I know that find where Jesus was in the temple debating with the lawyers and doctors and the professors, if you please, on the whenever his parents came back to find him, and he was 12 years of age. But that doesn't mean a thing in the world. I've seen children who were brought up in a home where they had Bible studies, prayer time, at five or six years old, 
I saw a little four-year-old. I questioned that little girl. She had spent the mother the, the summer with her grandma in, in Ohio. And she come home, told her mama, she said, Mama, I was saved up at grandma's. I'm ready to get baptized. Didn't know how to say baptized, but she knew what it meant. And she said, I need that. She said, why do you need to get baptized? But well, I need to be obedient to Jesus. I questioned her. The kid had it. The child had every right answer. I said, I don't have that. No. She wants to follow the Lord in baptism. I can't say no. Would you believe I got criticized? Well, he's going to baptize in babies now. I won't say no. You keep the nursery. I don't. <laughs> now you know it was a person that worked in the nursery that complained. But at any rate, our walk with the Lord Jesus <coughs> is so important. When, when, we, when are you going to take your last step? You don't know? You know how much money you got in your pocket? Yeah. Okay. So you got more money. You do time as far as you know. You know, we all do. Pam hey, feeling her pocket. She don't I have the money. <laughs> she ain't got <laughs> uh, We take for granted. I'm going to live a long time. When I was this young man's age, if somebody, <laughs> if somebody told me I would live to be as old as I am now, I said, you out of your mind. I'll never live to be that old. And now here I are. And everybody else, they fell other they said, you need to respect your elder. And I said, if I can find one, I will. <laughs> so, <laughs> keep looking for one. But at any rate, any comments you have you want to make before we dismiss? All right, if you will stand together, we'll dismiss and pray. Father, thank you for the time we've shared in your word today. Enable us, Father. Aid us as we walk with you. That every day with you will be better than a yesterday. Every day with you will be sweeter than the day before. A day with you, we'll look forward to a day tomorrow. Thank you, Father, for your love, for your kindness, for your forgiving spirit, for making us one of your dear children. Bless Father Jason as he is traveling, whatever he's doing right now, watch over him, Lord, and strengthen him, encourage him, keep him, Father, in your love and your care. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.